can hear me and are ready, uh, please, please turn to the book of Revelation chapter 11. I'm, I'm excited about it. I have reviewed the uh, content and the context of uh, the Bible study. And so I want to welcome all of you who are, are joining us live on Facebook. Uh, may God bless you tonight. We are discussing chapter 11, chapter 11 of the book of Revelation. So we thank God for those of you that have joined us. And so we'll get right into it in one second after we do our intro. We'll move right into the, the, uh, the Bible study for this evening. to the Service for Christ Ministries prayer meeting and Bible study hosted by the Reverend Dr. Jerry W. Jones Jr. live on Zoom and Facebook. Please stick around after our broadcast to learn more about our ministry. Well, my brothers and sisters, once again, uh, this is uh, Pastor Jerry Jones, and I'm just so, so delighted, so happy. People still coming in uh, for our uh, Bible study for this evening. And I ask you to turn in the Bible to uh, the book of Revelation chapter 11. But before I go any further, let me just go over uh, what the Bible is. The, the, the Bible is a book containing the revelation of God to men, to man. The Bible is a holy book because it is the word of God. The Bible is divided into two general parts. They are the Old Testaments and the New Testament. The Old Testament and the New Testaments. Uh, there are 66 books in the Bible. There are 39 in the Old Testament and 27 in New Testament. There are five poetical books in the Bible. Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and Song of Solomon. There are 21 doctrinal books in the New Testament, Romans through Jude. There are 17 prophetical books in the Old Testament and one in the New Testament. That's the book that we will be uh, discussing uh, this evening, Revelation. There are four major prophets. There are Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Daniel. The Bible reveals to us the end of the world, the great end, of the Bible is salvation, which Jesus Christ brought us through his sacrificial death of, of, um, of serving as the perpetuation down the cross, as indicated in the book of Romans chapter 6, verses 3, 4, and 5, and other scriptures throughout the Bible. The Bible teaches us the will of God, our duty to him, and to our fellow man. And so once again, we are looking at the book of Revelation uh, chapter 11. Last week, last week when we uh, left our Bible study, we had some very, very interesting and exciting things that were going on. So for those of you that have your Bibles with you, I would like for you to turn to Revelation chapter 11. And I want to uh, start with Revelation chapter 11, verse number 15. 
Revelation chapter 11, verse number 15. Let us bow for a word of prayer. Lord Jesus, uh, we do thank you for your love. We thank you for your peace. We thank you for your... And even now, dear God, we're coming for your presence with exceeding joy. We give you all the honor, all the glory, all the power, for you are truly worthy, as you tell us in Revelation chapter 4, verse 11. You're worthy of all the power. You have made all things, and for all things, you have created all things for your purpose. Lord, let us establish and find our purpose in life. Help us, Lord, uh, to define and redefine the things that we must do in order to achieve the greatness that you have uh, positioned us for in our lives. Now, Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, my Lord, who is my strength and my redeemer. That's all those who are on our call this evening and those who are trying to get in even right now. Bless this Bible study in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. So we got uh, some more people I got to admit to come in. Wow, it is really interesting. The number of people who are joining us from all over the place. Amen. We thank God. And for those of you who are our Facebook friends, turn with me uh, to to the uh, to the book of Revelation, chapter uh, chapter eleven. When we last when we left last last week, we were dealing with this. Let's let's begin then at Revelation chapter eleven, verse number seven. Verse number seven says. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast, the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them. We were talking about the two witnesses, the last two witnesses that will testify about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now, we pointed out last week that we believe these two witnesses are uh, Enoch and Elijah, and the reason that we gave for saying that Enoch and Elijah were these two witnesses, because the Bible does not tell us, is because the Bible teaches us, which we discussed last week, that it is appointed for man to die once. These are the only two people in the Bible that we cannot actually say died. Both of them were translated, and that's the reason why we believe it, that now they have fulfilled the prophetic word of the Bible, and they have died. And they have died at the hands of the enemies of God, the beasts that have been let out of the abyss, that have tortured mankind, that came out as, as, as though that they were scorpion, but came out as locusts that are supposed to eat greenery, but came out with a, a tail to torment men for, for many months. Nevertheless, verse number eight says, and their dead bodies, referring to the two witnesses, shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. And they of the people and kindreds uh, of every tongue and nation shall see the dead body three days and, uh, and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in the graves. And to make a, a long story short about these two witnesses, at the end of the three and a half days, at the end of these three days and a half, three and a half days, God's going to breathe the breath of life into these two witnesses, and they're going to be resurrected into the newness of life. And God will tell them, come up hither, and they will depart in a cloud and go back into the kingdom of God. Isn't that something uh, to get excited about? And so I want to just move on to verse number 13. In the same hour, where these two witnesses were uh, uh, called up to heaven after they have completed their mission, their purpose. An earthquake occurred and the 10th part of the city fell and the earthquake uh, were slain men of 7,000 and the remnant of people that were left after the earthquake, after the earthquake and after these two witnesses had, had been um, brought back into the kingdom of God, everyone became afraid. So I often ask myself, why is it that people become afraid in a tragic moment? Why is it that people do not fear uh, God when things are going good in their lives? Why is it that uh, something has to happen before they call out, oh God, thank you, Lord Jesus, help me God. Because people are not consciously aware of really of, of, of who God is and you know, what type of power that 
that God has. And so that is what the purpose of uh, uh, this, this, this Bible st study is about. So tonight, uh, I've been getting comments from people that, uh, that, that, that a lot of you want to uh, uh, read uh, some scriptures and things like that and so forth and so on. Let me just go over verses, chapter 11, verse 7 through 10. And we'll, when these two witnesses finish their testimony, those beasts that came out of the violence pit, yes, they, uh, they made war against them and killed them. And so we want to move, move beyond that. Now, again, these two witnesses were restored to life. We talked about that. I want to move uh, uh, into the next phase of this, the result of what happened when these two witnesses were resurrected into the newness of life. Fear came upon their enemies. They heard a great voice from heaven say, come up here. They ascended up into heaven in a cloud, just as, just, as, uh, just as Jesus did. Amen? People on the earth, when they saw that the two witnesses were dead, the people on the earth, they were happy at the death of the two witnesses. And why would you be happy at the death of witnesses for Jesus Christ? Because... Uh, when you see people out there witnessing for Jesus Christ, I'll tell you the truth. What happens is this. People bring truth when they're witnessing about Jesus Christ. And a lot of people don't want to hear the truth or experience the truth. So when that truth is, is moved away from them, then all of a sudden uh, 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 they become happy because they don't have to confront the truth in their lives. And so that's why the people were happy. God told the two witnesses to come up here. Well, I want to move on because when, when we move on to uh, Revelation chapter 11, verse number 15, verse number 15, it says, and the seven angels sounded and there was great voices in heaven saying, listen to this, the kingdom of this world are become the kingdom of God. Amen. And so can somebody uh, just read for me verse number 15, verse number 15 and verse number 16 and verse number 17. Please, somebody read. So you wanted verse 15 through 17? I want you to, you know, thank you very much, Captain Mentor. If you can read Revelation chapter 11, verse 15 uh, through 17, that would be helpful. Okay, Lord, please sanctify your holy word. <clears throat> and the seventh angels sounded, and there were great voices in heaven saying, the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. And the four and 20 elders who sat before God on their seats fell upon their faces and worshiped God, saying, we give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art and wast and art to come, because thou hast taken thee thy great power and has reigned amen uh captain amen. Mentor, thank you uh very much for reading that you know and and, and so what we have is this is this is actually as, as we said before that this is the end of the age as we know it is approaching because remember what happened in the garden of of eden when adam and eve sinned after God had, had given them the commandment not to eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, when, when Adam and Eve did that, they turned the dominion of the earth, which God had put in Adam's hand, over to Satan. And from that time until we see the prophetic word being fulfilled here in this book of Revelation, chapter 11, verse 15, man has ruled this earth. And now with the announcement, indeed the pronouncement of, 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 of what you just now read, uh, Captain Mentor, uh, 
it, it, it is very clear when it says the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdom of our Lord. That means that uh, the the dominion over the earth now is back in the hands of God. He gave the dominion Adam to rule over all of his creation on this earth. Adam bequeathed it to Satan. That's why Satan could could, could challenge Jesus uh, with those challenges. Uh, same way that he did Eve, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. But now God has taken back possession, possession of the earth as we know it now, as we've already seen leading up to chapter 11 in this book of Revelation. We have had so, we've had so many atrocities and so many things have happened. We've seen over 6 billion, uh, close to 6 billion people uh, uh, impacted through death as a result of these judgments that God is pouring out that we've just gone through in our study on this book of Revelation. It's very interesting and important. So the end of the age as we know it is 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 approaching. And as Revelation chapter 11 verse 15 tells us, the seven trumpet sounds and the seven angels sound and there was great voices in heaven announcing that the kingdom of this world had become the kingdom of our Lord and of Christ. That is a big deal. And people are, are, are so upset about it. At the sounding of the seventh trumpet, John heard these voices in heaven, which uh, Carl just read. Uh, voices in heaven announcing a change in the kingdom of Christ. Well, God has always ruled over uh, his creation, but he allowed man to have that possession of his creation. And again, man gave the creation to Satan through, through sin. Jesus Christ has already died and redeemed man uh, uh, to God the Father. Here, here, these, uh, there, here, here there is not a single voice making this announcement but a whole chorus of, of, of voices chanting this victory of our Lord and Savior, uh, Jesus Christ. Be believe me, uh, my, uh, my brother and sister, this is indeed a big deal. See, when we start to think about the heavenly host and what God is doing uh, uh, in heaven and how God's plan of salvation extends beyond this life, this life that we know it, and his celebration is in heaven. I haven't read any place, even at this point, where God is celebrating here on this earth. God celebrating in heaven the, the fact that Jesus Christ overcame death for all of us. And so that's why we write our daily devotions every morning, is to try to emphasize the importance, the grace, and the love that God the Father, and God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit have for us, and what they're willing to do so that we could have eternal life in, in heaven with God the Father. Now we see this earthly rule from man's hand, the presidents, the kings, the chancellors, and all that, the Pope, everybody. We see this earthly rule uh, uh, passing from man into the hands of God. And, and it's mentioned several times in the uh, Old Testament scriptures. That this would happen. So I'm, I want everybody, uh, Ms., uh, Captain Mentor has already read to us. Let's look at some of the scriptures since you all want to read. Uh, I'm going to ask you to go into the Old Testament. For those of you that are um, on the call tonight, you don't have to show your face, but you can certainly help us out by reading a few scriptures as we uh, come down on the first half hour. I want someone to pull up, write it down, uh, Ezekiel chapter 21, verse 26 and 27. Somebody write that down. I want someone to pull up Daniel chapter 2, verse 35 and 44. Somebody write that one down. And also uh, uh, Zechariah chapter 14, verse 9. Okay. Someone write those down, and we'd like to hear from you on those. So Ezekiel chapter 21, verses 26 and 27. Does anyone have that one? You can read to us, please. 
Help us out a little bit. You said Ezekiel chapter 21? Yes, Ezekiel chapter 21, verses 26 and 27. Okay, it says, Thus says the Lord God, remove the denim and take off the crown. This shall not be the same. Exalt him that is low and abase him that is high. I will overturn, overturn, overturn it, and it shall be no more until he comes whose right it is, and I will give it him. Thank you. Daniel chapter 2, verses 35 and 44. Come on, y'all. Come on. Open your Bibles up, please. This is and in the stuff. days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. But it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. For as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it break it into pieces, the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold. The great God have made known the king what shall come to pass hereafter, and the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof sure. Thank you, uh, Minister Jarrell Bass. Thank you, Minister uh, Patricia Jones. Uh, Zechariah uh, 14, nine, somebody else. Zechariah 14.9. Zechariah, I thank all of you who have joined us. Somebody pull up Zechariah chapter 14, verse 9. Come on, folks. Come on. Come on. This is Bible study. Come on. Zechariah 14, chapter 9 says, And the Lord uh, shall excuse be me, king. Zechariah, oh. Zechariah chapter 14, verse 9. Uh -huh. Yeah. Chapter 14, verse 9. Uh-huh. Okay, thank you. And and the Lord shall be king over all the earth, and that day shall there be one Lord and his name one. Amen. And so the, thank you all. You can go back on mute if you're not speaking. Uh so so the, you know the main point that uh, I'm trying to make here is the fact that the Revelation chapter 11, verse 15 is is teaching us that the kingdom of this world has now been turned over to God and he's going to rule and super rule. And the reason why I actually ought to read uh, 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 those scriptures is, is to show that the Bible uh, fulfills itself. The prophetic word that, that comes out of those scriptures, the prophecies that comes out of uh, 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 Zechariah, Ezekiel and Daniel and their other scriptures that attest to this same thing. These, these, these things were written, these scriptures were written uh, uh, thousands of years before the prophecy of Revelation uh, will even come into being. I mean, because these, these are unfulfilled prophecies right now because the man still has control, uh, dominion over the creation of God, even though God is ultimately um, uh, ruling and super ruling, God is allowing these things to happen. This this process of the of the destruction of the earthly power uh, is, is already underway. We can see that the, the the power of the princesses and the kings and the earth is being eroded even right now. And God's power. Let's take a look at the uh, pandemic. People keep asking: Is is it a pandemic or is it a plague? I say it's a plague. I said it was a plague from the very beginning when it happened last March, that this was a plague. People want to try to label it as a pandemic and as a disease. What's interesting to me about it, and you know, my heart goes out to all of the victims of this uh, plague, pandemic, whichever word works for you, I'm using pandemic. My mother succumbed to it January the 16th, of uh, the coronavirus. And so my heart is not only open for our family, which we're still in mourning, but for all the other millions and thousands of people who have been impacted by this virus. You can see that man said, well, we have, we have the, uh, the Pfizer, the Moderna, and the Johnson & Johnson vaccines, and people still die. 
but not as many. And so God doubled down and said, okay, you, 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 are, you all were able to handle a little bit better. You take off your mask and you were able to handle uh, a little bit better uh, the coronavirus. Okay, well, here's, here's the Delta and here's a different variation of the Delta virus. You see, and, 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 and what God is showing us is that uh, we are still not listening, we're not hearing what God is saying to some extent. And so he has chosen to uh, take a different approach and, and get our attention in a different way. Uh, so, so what do you think about the scriptures uh, here that state uh, unequivocally that Christ will reign, that Jesus Christ will reign over this earth? That he will reign over this earth. That is the transition that uh, 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 Carl Mentor read in Revelation chapter 11, verse 15. Christ is going to reign over this earth. In other words, uh, if, 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 if we continue to uh, understand what that means, that means that, that Christ will reign forever, forever and ever, almost like infinity. Forever and ever, Christ will cons consistently reign over the earth, and he's never going to relinquish that reign of the earth again. That great announcement that, that was just read in Revelation eleven fifteen: Never again will the earth be controlled by man, and never again will the earth be controlled by Satan. We had our turn, it, it, and, and uh, we end up uh, corrupting the world and, and, and causing some uh, big issues for ourselves, but the seventh trumpet, now we've gone through uh, the opening of the seven seals, and now we've gone through the seven trumpets, uh, and we still have the vow or bold judgments. Remember when we first started this, this series on the book of Revelation, we talked about uh, 21 judgments, 21 judgments that were coming out in the book of Revelation, 21. And now we've gotten through uh, the seven seals and the blowing of the seven trumpet. This seven trumpet, uh, if we look at verse number, uh, Revelation chapter 11, verse number 16 and 17. And for those of you that read, thank you very much. Verse number 16 says, and the four and 20 elders which sat before God on the, on the seats, on their seats, fell upon their faces and worshiped God. This is the four, this is 24 elders. We, we discussed the 24 elders. Uh, for those of you that want to catch up to where we are in our study on the book of Revelation, you can go to our YouTube page and you can look up Servants for Christ, uh, Servants, like you see on the screen, Servants for Christ Baptist Church. And you can look at lesson number three or four on the study of Revelation where we talked about uh, the 24 elders. But here they are again. The 24 elders are mentioned in this book of Revelation seven times. And every time that you see their name mentioned, uh, which we identified them as the 12 tribes, uh, the leaders of the 12 tribes of Israel, and also uh, the 12 apostles, you know, minus uh, Judas. That's what we believe that they are. They, they, nowhere in the Bible does it tell us specifically who these 24 elders are. But we believe 12 and 12 apostles, 12 tribes of Israel. That's what we believe. And, and so the, uh, the, the 24 elders sat before God. They sit before God. I have a picture of it that we show. And they fell upon their faces and worshiped God, praying, praying, uh, saying, We give God thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art and was and ought to come. They're praising him for being almighty. As I was reading it this evening, I said, wow, these elders are all, they throwing their crowns at the feet of God. So we are unworthy to have these crowns, which they have received the crown of, of, of rejoicing, the crown of life, and other crowns. They take their crowns and throw it. One of my professors told me when I was uh, Dr. Arthur Crowley, he said, there are gonna be many people that make it in because they accept Jesus Christ, but they're not doing any work. And so he said, uh, uh, how would you like to go to a party and everybody bring a gift to the party except you? 
I, that was a very, I was taking New Testament class at that time, New Testament too. I said in my, I was sitting in my classroom and I said, wow, I've done that. I've gone to a party and everybody bought a gift except me. And it wasn't because I didn't want to give. I wasn't thinking properly. And so it, 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 I don't want to be one who come to the kingdom of God empty handed. Everyone else is bringing their crown of life, crown of rejoicing and whatever. The five crowns listed in the Bible. And I come empty handed, Jerry Jones, out here trying to preach and help other people get saved. And then I'm, I'm, I'm in the back corner someplace and, and not doing what I should be doing. And that might relate to some of you as well. Some of you might come to the party or to God's kingdom. I was telling people I was talking with my mother this week. My mother died on January the 6th, uh, 16th. I was talking with her Sunday morning, four o'clock in the morning. People want to know, how are you talking to your mother? My son said, you talking to your mother? They think I'm, I'm bonkers or cuckoo or crazy or something. Well, the spirit realm does exist. And I spoke to my mother in about a half hour in a dream. And I said, what are you doing? She said that she's preparing places for people who are going to be arriving to the kingdom of heaven. I said, that's very important. And we talked about a half hour. She said some other things that I'm not going to get into in the dream. But God told Miriam and Aaron when they were talking about Moses, you don't you fear the man of God? That I, you know, he said, I speak to, I speak to Moses directly. But to the other prophets, I speak to them in dreams and visions. So don't think that. God is limited in how he communicates with us and what he says to us. And so here we have the 24 elders are falling down on their faces. My thought was this. These 24 elders are in the throne of God, in the throne room of God, in his inner chamber, sitting around his throne. And they have enough sense to fall down on their faces and worship God, saying these words, thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art and was and ought to come, uh, because uh, uh, thou has taken the great, the great power and has reigned. In other words, God has taken the power back from the earth, and he's reigning. My question was, many people that we know and we see daily, they refuse to bow their knee to God. The elders are falling on their face and worshiping God. Many people that we know refuse to stand up and praise God. It gives me reason to pause and, and, and to want to exclaim, proclaim to the world, whatever you're doing as you are going through your day, take time out to, to worship God and praise him. In heaven, they're praising God. They're saying, God Almighty, you are worthy. Praise him for his magnificence. Praise him because he created you. Praise him because he provides for you. Just find some reason to praise God for something. The elders fell down on their faces and they worshiped God as they have done seven other times in this book of Revelation. And, 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 and they're giving thanks to God as the eternal one. My daily devotion, I think it was today or yesterday, I wrote that uh, God is Alpha and Omega. And it's, it's great when we know who our creator is, that he is Alpha and Omega. And again, many people won't stand up to worship God. As a matter of fact, uh, my brothers and sisters, and even those that are on Facebook, thank you for joining us. I see you out there on Facebook. Uh, 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 many people find it offensive to bow down to God. But yet they'll bow down to man. They'll bow down to uh, 
money, they essentially will bow down to movie stars. We talked about idols and idolatry in our morning devotion or several days back. For those of you that want to read, we had like number 213 or 208 days straight in our daily devotion that we've been writing for the last 208 days straight daily devotion. Every day we write a daily devotion. Now I'm starting to get people to say, put it in a book so other people can read these daily devotions. Look at Serve for Christ Facebook page or Jerry Jones Facebook page. People talking about how they've been inspired to write uh, Christian messages and, and preach sermons and study. My wife come and say that she had to look up a couple words to figure it out. Well, that's the whole purpose of the devotions, to drive people to pray and to drive people to read scriptures so that they can become more enlightened and that your life can be much stronger so that you can incorporate godly principles into your family, into your marriage, into your church, that you will become stronger in a way that you have not been strong before. Well, yeah, my mom, my mother used to say, yeah, time's getting a little bit short, and then she's out of here. Not only that, uh, uh, many people find it very strange to stand up and, and, and worship God, and again, offensive to bow down to God Almighty. Uh, many believe uh, that, that God has manifested his power in a way that they don't appreciate or understand and, and taking authority over the earth the whole earth, he's taking authority over the whole earth here in this 11th chapter of the book of Revelation. And many of you never thought that that would happen. Many people think that in the book of uh, Genesis chapter six, when God brought the flood and uh, Captain Mentor and I were talking about that this morning uh, during our prayer devotion, how God busted up the, the firmament and allowed the waters to come back together for the, for, for the flood because God said that uh, uh, that the thoughts of man were continually evil. And that is the judgment that we see coming out in this book of Revelation, where God has said, no more, I've had enough of man. And his judgments are coming out. His judgments are coming out on mankind. And these last two witnesses came and, and, and they killed them. They killed Jesus. Every time there's a witness for God, people want to kill that witness. I call it being blinded by the truth. Psalm chapter two, verse nine is being fulfilled here uh, where Christ is the anointed of God reigns. He reigns uh, uh, over the entire earth. Not only that, yeah, let me read chapter 11, verse number 18. For those of you that have your Bibles, read along with me. Because Jesus Christ and God is taking over the million of the earth, this is what happened. The nations were angry and thy wrath is come in the time of the dead that they should be judged and that thou shouldest give reward unto the servants, the prophets and to the saints and them that fear thy name, small and great and should destroy them which destroy the earth. See, there's gonna come a time um, uh, Reverend Akita's on the line tonight. There's, there, she likes to talk about reaping, sowing and reaping. You reap what you sow. Now, all these people that have done wickedness on the planet Earth, destroyed the Earth, impacted the Earth in a negative way, and have been corrupt in their testimony and their witness in representing our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, it is called payday or payback. I think James Brown had a song, Payback. I'm not sure, maybe somebody can tell me. But he even thought about payback. But here in verse number 18, the nations were angry because they no longer had control over the earth when God took possession. When the, when the announcement was made in chapter 11, verse 15, three verses ago, people became upset and they became angry they became angry because of the, the, uh, the events that were identified. Christ reigning, the nations got angry, the wrath, God's wrath is coming to them, judgment is here, uh, death has come, uh, the, he's giving rewards to the prophets and to the servants, and, 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 and he's uh, 
uh, blessing the saints, the people who have been working in the vineyard, going out feeding the homeless, the hopeless, clothing those that are naked, visiting the, the prisoners, those that are sick and shut in, those that have, in fact, been doing the work of God. He's given them rewards. And those who have not, they're receiving their just, their just due. I can understand why people would be angry because all the time they've been on top of life. And now all of a sudden they're at the bottom of the pit, so to speak. I asked a question to those of you that are uh, on the broadcast this evening with us and we thank God for each one of you. Uh, are you in any of those groups right now are you, the Bible teaches us, uh, let a man examine himself. <laughs> That's when we're doing the communion. <laughs> let him drink of that cup. <laughs> but are you in a category where you are not doing the work of God? Reverend Nikita and I were talking about uh, vocation and purpose. And many of us that are in Christendom today realize that our purpose is to do the will of God and to fulfill the purpose that God has for our lives. My vocation was my job when I was working 47 years, but my purpose is to fulfill what God has for me to do. And so I'm asking you, have you identified your destiny, your purpose or your vocation and are you in any of these groups that will be angry because God is coming to super rule over the nation? And many people will feel his wrath. Or are you in the group that is helping, helping God to fulfill the mission that those people who are, are less uh, fortunate we have life and have life more abundantly. Are you in, what group are you in? And uh, included also in our understanding of, of how we are to react to God, uh, those that fear the Lord, those that fear the Lord name, small and great is what the scripture is saying in verse number 18. They're included in the gifts. And I ask you a question this evening. Do you fear the Lord God Almighty? Or do you take the Lord God Almighty for granted? Do you fear the name of God? The book of Proverbs tell us that uh, uh, at the beginning, that the beginning of uh, uh, knowledge is the beginning of understanding. I might have got that a little twisted. Uh, but the fear, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. When you fear God, when I fear God, we have wisdom. Because we know that God is immutable. We know that he's omnipotent. He's all powerful. You see, uh, uh, yes, the fact that these people are upset is a realization that there is a, a transition from the kingdom of earth being placed in the kingdom of God. Now, how, how do you feel about going back uh, to the theocratic rule of God being over top of us? And the only reason why he gave uh, them a king in Israel is because they wanted to be like other nations. I, I, I would prefer to have a righteous God, the righteous God, the theocratic rule of God over me because I see what man will do. Man is insensitive, double-minded, and so forth and so on. I, I wonder oftentimes why people have this anger about God's wrath when they had time, ample time, to follow God's ordinances, statutes, and the commands of God. There's been ample time for many of us to say, Lord God, I hear your ordinances, your statutes and your command, and I understand it. Help me to become stronger that I can act out 
the order of the statutes and the commands that you have given me and stop coming up with these excuses about why we want to do things that give us pleasure in life. So tonight, uh, the subject that we were focusing on was uh, Revelation chapter uh, number 11, uh, verses uh, 7 through 18. And I think that it's been a very, very powerful uh, lesson that, that we have gone over. I'm going to stop uh, right here, and I'm just going to ask uh, anyone that has any questions, or if you have any comments, you can take your mics off. Uh, next week we'll we'll we'll, we'll conclude this chapter, uh, Revelation 19, uh, 11, 19, where we're going to talk about the opening of the temple of God in heaven, and the temple of God in heaven and how it was opened, and we're going to finish that up chapter eleven, and then we will start moving into the last section of the book of Revelation and the opening of the seven vows, which is a continuation of the outpouring of God's wrath upon this earth. So I, I give God all the honor and praise. Uh, anyone have a comment you'd like to make? Uh, or, or uh, anything you want to say at this point? Don't everybody speak up at one time. I asked my wife, I said, I don't know why people are not talking back uh, to me when, when, when we are having, having Bible study. I know that we do have some uh, very scholarly people on the call, but if, if, you have, if you have no further comments um, that you want to make, then certainly we will close this segment out and come back and say uh, uh, good evening to everyone. It's uh, about two minutes before eight. We'll close out on time. Once again, I'm going to ask, does anyone have any comments? First Lady, you have your microphone off. Did you want to say anything? No, I just want to say thank you very much for the Bible study lesson tonight on Revelation chapter 11 through um, verse 18. And looking forward to next week when you start in chapter 12. I can always count on you for loving, kind support. I appreciate you. You are the producer of this broadcast. And I certainly do want to acknowledge you know, that you're doing a great job. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. And Carl Mentor is saying thank you uh, for the fellowship as he exits. Him and I will get together in a few minutes to talk about some other matters that are before us. Here's the closeout uh, session this evening. We'll be right back to say goodbye. OK. Thank you for viewing our broadcast. Please visit our Facebook page, Service for Christ Baptist Church. You can also visit our YouTube page, search Service for Christ Baptist Church to view more of our media catalog. Your generosity makes our ministries possible, helping fulfill our mission to build disciples who win the world for Jesus Christ. To join as a virtual member or to support our ministry, see that, Pat? please visit serviceforchristinc.org. Yes. If you would like to send a pastor's love offering, please go to Cash App, dollar sign, Dr. Jerry Jones. Our church office number is 240-244-2564. For prayer requests, please call 240-241-241. 0849. As always, you can reach us on our email at sfcbcministries at gmail.com. In the year 2021, our theme is Transform Yourself. It comes from the book of Revelation 21, verse 5. Please visit us at 713 Katy Drive, Fort Washington, Maryland, 207. Four, four, where our pastor uh -huh. is the illustrious Reverend mm -hmm. Dr. J.W. Jones Jr. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Bye bye. Hold on. Hold on. Come on, lift your hands if you know anything about his grace. Oh. Well, folks, I want to thank you all once again for joining us, uh, uh, Serving for Christ, on our Bible study. Uh, may God bless each of you, and we'll see you next week on Service for Christ Baptist Church Bible Study.
we'll, we'll see you then. Good night, everybody, and may God bless you. God bless all the people who are here. May the words of, of our mouth been, have been beneficial to these folks. And then, Lord, have your way with each one of them. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. May God bless each of you. And good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. God bless good night. everyone. Good night. God bless you all as well. Good night. Bye -bye. Good night.